Find the domain and range of the function. So for number 16, we have h sub t is equal to cotangent t. Now, to determine the domain and range of cotangent t, we need to graph first our sine function. If you remember, in trigonometry, we graph the sine function before we were able to graph the cotangent. Now, if the function is given cotangent 2t, then you need to graph sine 2t first. Now, if the given is uh, 3 cotangent pi pi t minus 2, then you need to graph first 3 sine pi pi t minus 2 before you're able to graph the cotangent function. Now, for this, we will have the original equation for the trigonometric function. We have y is equal to a sine bx minus c plus d. So, the a is the amplitude. So, here we can say there's no number, so that is imaginary 1 which will represent our A. And the B is the number beside or the coefficient of the variable. So here our variable is T and there's no number so that is imaginary 1. So B is equal to 1. And as we can see there's no horizontal or vertical displacement. Now and I will, we will need to determine our period which is 2 pi over b. So this is the formula to determine the uh, complete cycle of the function. So this will be 2 pi over 1 because b is equal to 1. So our complete cycle, one cycle is 2 pi. Now to graph this, if you remember, we divide our uh, period into four. So the starting point, since there's no shifting, the starting point for sine is always the zero. If there's no horizontal or vertical uh, shift, then the sine always started with zero and the cosine starts with the amplitude. Now here we have two pi. And we need to divide 2 pi by 4. So 2 pi divided by 4, this will be equal to pi over 2, which will be our first coordinate here, pi over 2. And the second, we keep on adding 2 pi. So this will be equal to pi because pi over 2 plus pi over 2 will be pi. Then the third, we add another pi. So this will be 3 pi. Or we need to add another pi over 2. So this will be 3 pi over 2. So we keep on adding pi over 2 for its coordinate and the whole uh, one cycle will be 2 pi. Now we, I said it's one cycle because trigonometric function is continuous. The graphs never ends. Now uh, some of them like the cotangent is there's a discontinuity but it repeats by itself. Now here we will try to, do, uh, to graph first our sign. So the sign starts from the origin, then it goes up with the amplitude in our first coordinate of your uh, function. And then it goes here in the uh, x coordinate or x uh, axis, then it goes again down with the uh, lower amplitude then it goes up so meaning our sine function is this now the sine function as you hit the x-axis that will be the asymptote for our cotangent that's why we need to graph first the sine so we will know where's the coordinate or the uh, the cotangent function will be undefined. So whenever the graph of sine hit the x-axis, that will be our amplitude, meaning our cotangent function cannot cross this line.
So these are our asymptote. This is one of the asymptote, and this is also asymptote, and this is also asymptote. So our cotangent function then, if you remember, if it is a positive, it goes from here down. So uh, this is our cotangent T. Now, if you will remember, we need to do the domain and range. For the domain, it doesn't cross at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. So meaning, our domain cannot be equal to n multiplied by pi. So, but the domain can be 2n n minus 1 pi over 2. So if n is equal to if n is equal to 1 then this will be 2 multiplied by 1 minus 1 pi over 2 so this will be equal to pi over 2. Then if n is equal to 2 so this will be x is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1 pi all over 2. So this will be 4 minus 1 will turn to be 3 pi over 2. So these are the, the domain of our function cotangent t. Now the range, the y coordinate, as you see, this is the arrow, so it goes down to negative infinity and it goes up to positive infinity. So the range will be negative infinity to positive infinity. So to do this problem, you need to remember how to graph our trigonometric function.